In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. This evening we are grateful to God once again that we are able to unite ourselves spiritually in this daily broadcast of our Holy Eucharist. Today we join the whole church in commemorating the memorial of Our Lady of Fatima. Father Bernard and myself, we both serve at the Church of Our Lady of Fatima. And today, despite the many plans that we may have had of wanting to celebrate this feast in our own parish, we are unable to do so. But we would like to unite ourselves this evening through this Holy Eucharist with all our parishioners, not just in our parish, but other parish communities that are under the patronage of Our Lady of Fatima, to offer up this Eucharist for your intentions, also for the intentions of all those who join us in the daily broadcast of the Eucharist. And so as we come before the Lord in this Holy Eucharist, be it acknowledged that we are sinners, but we come with, with confidence because we know our God is a loving and a compassionate God, and that is why we are able to stand before Him, asking Him for His pardon and mercy. And so let us pause for a few moments. We call to mind our failures. We turn to this loving and compassionate Father and we ask for pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who chose the mother of your Son to be our mother also, grant us that, persevering in penance and prayer for the salvation of the world, we may further more effectively each day the reign of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some men came down from Judea and taught the brothers, unless you have yourselves circumcised in the tradition of Moses, you cannot be saved. This led to a disagreement, and after Paul and Barnabas had had a long argument with these men, it was arranged that Paul and Barnabas and others of the church should go up to Jerusalem and discuss the problem with the apostles and elders. All the members of the church saw them off, and as they passed through 
Phoenicia, and Samaria, they told how the pagans had been converted. And this news was received with the greatest satisfaction by the brothers. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and by the apostles and elders, and gave an account of all that God had done with them. But certain members of the Pharisees' party who had become believers objected, insisting that the pagans should be circumcised and instructed to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and elders met to look into this matter. The word of the Lord. I rejoice when I heard them say, Let us go to God's house. I rejoice when I heard them say, Let us go to God's house. I rejoice when I heard them say, Let us go to God's house. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. I rejoice when I heard them say, Let us go to God's house. Jerusalem is built as a city, strongly compact. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the law. I rejoice when I this day. Let us go to God's house. For Israel's law it is there to praise the Lord's name. There were set the thrones of judgment of the house of David. I rejoice when I heard them say, Let us go to God's house. your home in me as I make mine in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me bears fruit in plenty. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he cuts away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes to make it bear even more. You are pruned already by means of the word I have spoken to you. Make your home in me as I make mine in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit all by itself, but must remain part of the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, with me in him, bears fruit in plenty. For cut off from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is like a branch that has been thrown away. He withers. These branches are collected and thrown on the fire, and they are burnt. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask what you will and you shall get it. It is to the glory of my Father that you should bear much fruit and then you will be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends in Christ, for many years in the life of the church, 
since the apparition of Our Lady to the three shepherd children in Fatima. The fixation was to discover the third secret of Fatima. Somewhat in that desire to know the secret took away the importance from the other two for many people. Many people were claiming that they could prophesy, that they knew. This was long before Pope John Paul II revealed the third secret. But once he did, that unrest was kind of went to the background. But if we were to look closely at the message of Fatima, I find that there are three characteristics in Mary's message to Jacinta, Francesco, and Lucia. The core of the message, if I were to simplify it, there are three words. Repent, pray, and be close to Jesus. One has to remember that this apparition occurs just before World War I. And that war was going to change the course of the world. Well, not just politically, but the human race itself was going to be changed. If I were to look, it, look at it from that perspective, the message of Mary at Fatima was to ask humanity not to lose sight of her son, Jesus, to remain focused on him who has come to give life and life to the fullest. Well, if Mary's message concerning the life of a disciple of Jesus is to remain focused on him, then our gospel today fix, fits perfectly the memorial that we are gathered to celebrate. Today, primarily in our gospel, we are invited to recognize our close relationship with Jesus, which he compares to the relationship between a vine and the branches that grow on it. As I was reflecting on the gospel, I could not help think of another analogy, maybe more relevant in these times when we are confined to our homes or that our movements are limited. Well, in today's language, probably Jesus would say, I am the router and you are the device. In other words, you need that router to connect to the rest of the world. Well, it may be oversimplifying it, but in this past two months, I'm sure many of us, including myself, and the availability of the Holy Eucharist through technology has been reliant on this aspect, to be connected. And so when Jesus speaks about the vine and the branches, he shows that the branches draw nourishment from the vine. A disciple also draws nourishment from Jesus, and he is that life giver for all of us. However, there is a reason. There is a reason as to why this symbiotic relationship is important whether it is one giving life to another or one drawing life from another, there is a divine element in this relationship. And our gospel today reminds us it is for the glory of the Father and nothing else. So in short, Jesus is telling us that the very core of our existence is to be connected to Him. He invites us to abide, to rest, to stay, to remain. These are the words that John would use in his gospel so that the divine life flows in and through each one of us. That is why, my dear friends, the life of a disciple of Jesus must be characterized by the fruits they bear. It is to the glory of the Father that you should bear fruit and be my disciples, John says. In order to bear good fruit, a disciple must be united with the vine, and that is Jesus. Without this life-giving sap, 
which flows into the branches through the vine, we can do absolutely nothing to please the Father. And so, the fruits of our Christian life are the work of God. Each one of us can and should see the life and work of God in others, in love, in commitment, in courage, in endurance, in ordinary kindness and compassion. Each one of us, my dear friends, we are gifted in some unique way. We can bear fruit, fruit for God in a way that nobody else can because you and I have been created in the image and likeness of God and not something else. There isn't any other prototype. Well, the long and short of it all is that the reality of Christian discipleship is knowing that apart from Jesus, if we are not connected to Him, we can do nothing. The source of life and spiritual fruit for a disciple of Jesus is not in ourselves. It is in Christ, the risen Christ. We are called to share all the good things that naturally attract people to God. We can live rightly and serve Him effectively only if we are connected to Jesus in a faith-love relationship and a relationship that must bear fruit, fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And all of this comes from just one source, Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And my dear friends, let us be connected with Jesus, who is our vine, because we are the branches. And in Him, you and I draw life, and life that may bear fruit for the greater glory of God. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord, forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Holy Father, this offering of our humility, which we bring you with joy as we commemorate the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant that it may be for us who are joined to the sacrifice of Christ our consolation on earth and our eternal salvation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless, 
and glorify your name in veneration of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices join with theirs in humble praise as we now acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save the Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to His second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with His Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her most sacred spouse, with your apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Julian, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we now await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed by this Paschal Sacrament, O Lord, that we who honour the memory of the mother of your Son may show forth in our mortal flesh the life of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth to glorify God by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Father Bernard and I would like to take this opportunity to wish all our parishioners of the Church of Our Lady of Fatima who have joined us in this Eucharist uh, blessed feast day and also to the other parish communities who celebrate this feast and all those who invoke the intercession of Our Lady. A blessed feast day. May we continue to be reunited in Jesus as we walk this path that God has called us to. Blessed feast day, everyone. Ave Maria, Gracia plena, Dominus Sanctum, Benedicta Oh, my God.